Okay, our next speaker is Doug Ubelacher. Dr. Ubelacher is a curator and senior scientist at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., where he serves as a consultant in forensic anthropology. He earned his Bachelor of Arts and PhD from the University of Kansas. Dr. Ubelacher has published extensively and has served on editorial boards of leading scientific journals. He is regarded as one of the world's leading anthropologists, receiving many international and national honors and awards throughout his esteemed career in the analysis of human skeletal remains with an emphasis on forensic applications. Dr. Ubelacher was accepted into the anthropology section of the Academy in 1974, served as president from 2011 to 2012, and was recognized as a, excuse me, as a distinguished fellow in 2016 Doug Ubelacher works tirelessly on behalf of Human Rights Internationally. He currently serves as the chair of the Academy's Humanitarian and Human Rights Resource Center, which promotes forensic science principles and applications to global projects requiring special forensic assistance. He is also one of the nicest people you will ever meet. Please help me welcome Doug Ubelacher. That was a great introduction. I'm not sure I deserved it, but it's, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I served as uh, AEFS president from 2011 to 2012, and I chose a focus on global research as a theme. Um, my sense was and is that much of our path forward uh, depends on quality research in the forensic sciences, and increasingly that research is global in scope. Uh, research doesn't really recognize international boundaries, uh, and in my experience, in my research experience, much of that uh, really is international. Um, I'd like to make two points in my 15 minutes this morning. One is that the initiatives that we take on in a presidential year can lead to long-range projects. We don't really realize this at the time, but if you take things on and they work out, um, they can lead to other, other important developments. We heard some of this with Barry's uh, presentation as well. Uh, when I came in in 2011, 2012, we were coming off um, a couple of years of intense discussions and reactions to the NAS report. And all of that was healthy and continues today. But I felt in 2011, 2012, it was time to shift a little bit and to make our statement to make a, a focus on how we as an organization uh, feel about forensic science, what are the issues, and what is our, our vision of the path forward during that time. Uh, there are a lot of challenges in a presidential year. There's a lot of work, and of course you still have your day job. But I decided to take on this volume, a, a book on uh, current issues and future directions in forensic science. We work, worked out an arrangement with Wiley Blackwell so that uh, AAFS and Wiley Blackwell would, would pu publish this book with royalties coming back to the Academy. So it was sort of a, a new model for how to uh, generate things. And I just, I'd just like to note briefly the response we had. Um, you know, when we take on projects like this for the Academy, they start out as a maybe a presidential idea, but they rapidly become a huge collaborative effort. Uh, everything I've been involved with in this, this Academy has involved many people, and almost instantly people coalesce and cooperate and volunteer and, and contribute. And I don't have time to go over all of these, but this, this volume represented an example of that. Uh, all sections were represented, and if you look at the authors involved in this, you'll see many, uh, many familiar names. Uh, somehow we were able to produce that book and during that year in spite of everything else we had to do. And the success of that led to conversations with Wiley Blackwell about, all right, that worked out pretty well. Why don't we keep this going? Uh, why don't we take the model of that of that book volume and expand it to a basically a publication series called Forensic Science in Focus. This was endorsed by the board of directors and we put together an advisory committee listed here uh, which continues today with the idea to take that same model and publish other volumes in forensic science that are timely again with uh, sponsorship of the academy and royalties coming back to the academy. 
I agreed to edit the first volume in that series. This was a global look at forensic science. I've done a lot of international work and felt the need to take a look at uh, the practice of forensic science in different countries around the world, the familiar patterns that we see and the variations that uh, we encounter. And very rapidly, um, I found amazing cooperation there as well. Uh, we had representation from many countries around the world on all continents and took a pretty good look at, at that regional variation. You'll see some familiar names uh, there as well. Uh, other titles in this series, uh, that volume was published. Uh, Jay Siegel's book on forensic chemistry was published. Uh, we have a wonderful volume on forensic microbiology that's expected out soon. And we have a variety of other uh, books that are in press or in the queue. Humanitarian Forensics, uh, Dan Martell's uh, effort to incorporate various past presidents to look at uh, what's going on and a book on theoretical and the scientific basis for forensic anthropology by Donna and Cliff Boyd. And there are others that are under consideration. So again, here's, a, here's an idea that uh, we materialized during the year I was president that sort of somewhat unexpectedly has grown into a, an AAFS project that I continue to be involved in. On another front, uh, my international interests took me to Seoul, Korea in October 2014 for the IAFS World Forensic Festival. Um, President Hee Sung Chung, who was with us today, was the, uh, was the leader of that conference. And at that conference, um, there was an invitation from President Chung for some of us to take a bus ride to a venue for a, a special event. There was a small group of us that were involved in that. And on that bus ride, I happened to sit down next to my friend and colleague, Luis Funderbreiter, who many of you know is a leading anthropologist in Latin America. He's uh, head of the Argentine forensic anthropology uh, team. Uh, and like myself, has had major involvement in humanitarian and human rights issues in various spots of the world, mostly Luis. And on that bus ride, we got to talking about the legacy of AAFS in humanitarian and human rights issues. Um, as many of you know, many AAFS colleagues over the years have become involved in global issues relating to humanitarian and human rights, and some have provided genuine leadership in that field. But there never had been a formal recognition of that, never a formal program with the Academy. And Luis and I talked about the how wonderful it would be if that finally materialized. We, we turned around and in the seat behind us was none other than Dan Martell, who was the uh, AAFS president that year. And, and on this bus ride, the three of us had a conversation about uh, what could be done uh, with the academy to make that happen. Um, basically out of that grew the structure of the Humanitarian Human Rights Resource Center Thanks to a few traffic jams, by the time we got to the venue, we had pretty well worked this out. And uh, thanks to Dan's initiatives, basically the board of directors endorsed this, and we now have a humanitarian and human rights resource center. All of this resulting from a, uh, a slow bus ride in Seoul, Korea. Uh, I chair this effort. Um, we have an inter just to bring you up to speed, we have an international advisory a council of key people around the world that are involved in, in these issues. We have a publications and documents sections uh, chaired by Marilyn Justice in toxicology, an equipment subcommittee chaired by Ron Singer in CRIM, a laboratory and analysis uh, protocols committee chaired by Sabra Botts Jones of toxicology, and an education subcommittee chaired by Don Mulhern. Uh, here, these folks are working tremendously hard with their committee members to assemble the resources that can be made available to the global community to impact um, humanitarian and human rights issues around the world. We receive financial support from the Academy with matching funds from the National Institute of Justice. All this has happened in the last two years. Uh, the NIJ money comes to us from the Forensic Technology Center of Excellence administered by RTI International. And in our first year, let me just give you a sampling of where AAFS has provided support. Um, this is an effort in Cambodia to preserve remains uh, resulting from uh, years of terrorism and destruction in that, in that country. 
uh, an effort for capacity building in Coahuila, Mexico, aimed at human identification. Uh, wonderful research on stable isotope forensics to, to better facilitate the identification of unidentified uh, dead uh, involved in border crossers in the Texas-Mexico border. Uh, another effort at strengthening and capacity building in another state in Mexico. Research involved in osteometric sorting, uh, a method important for mass secondary deposits that are involved in, uh, in human rights issues. Wonderful research on the detection of nerve agent exposure in human bone tissue and capacity building in the Philippines relating to uh, human rights vari variations. Uh, you know, in, in summary, I'll just return where I started. You know, we take on these projects in our presidential year of things that we think are important. And if we do them well, uh, it opens doors that can lead to other, other programs uh, like the two examples that I've just, I've just given you. Uh, I would just say it was an honor and pleasure to serve the Academy in 2011-2012 as your president. It continues to be an honor and pleasure to serve you as chair of, of these initiatives. Thank you for your attention.